What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. I got breaking news. Rising young welterweight contender Connor Ben, son of the legendary UK boxer Nigel Ben, will step back in the square circle December 11th. And he will be fighting Chris Algieri. So this probably will be the best name on Conor Ben's resume. Make no mistake about it. Now his last fight he fought Adrian Granados. And that fight left a lot to be desired as uh, Adrian Granados did not want to engage. Fought unlike he had fought in any of his previous fights was basically fighting off the back foot, moving around, didn't really wanna go head up with Conor Ben. Conor Ben got frustrated and uh, basically uh, pissed the fit in the middle of the ring. Like, come on, man, let's fight, let's fight, man. What you doing, man? This ain't what you, uh, this ain't how you ever fought before. Now you wanna get up in here with me and you wanna be a boxer all of a sudden when you was a brawler before. But with all that being said, Conor Ben got the job done and won that fight. Before that, he fought Samuel Vargas. Vargas, in a lot of people's opinion, defeated Amir Shannon Lil Glass Jal Khan in a fight that was very exciting, very fan friendly matchup. As he dropped Amir Khan multiple times, but Amir Khan was able to get a disputed decision win. Now, Conor Ben is going to uh, come into this fight with 19 victories, zero losses, 12 by knockout. Chris Algeria will come into the fight with 25 wins, three losses, only nine KOs. So he's a feather fisted fighter. He's basically Paula, he's basically Paulie Malinaji reincarnated. Don't have no power. Uh, he's been in there with some good fighters, though, man. You got to look at Chris Algeria. He's been in there with Provokinikov. He's been in there with the legendary Manny Pacquiao. He's fought Errol Spence Jr. He got steamrolled by Errol. That's probably one of Errol Spence's uh, best performance. Vintage performance. Hopefully that Errol Spence will uh, rear his head in his next couple of fights, especially if he ends up fighting uh, Terrence Bud Cross Crawford down the line. Hopefully we'll see that Chris Algieri against against Terrence Bud Crawford. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Man, these people be driving crazy out here, man. They speed, man, going 80 miles an hour on a 35 mile an hour road. It's absolutely ridiculous, but with all that being said, uh, it's going to be very interesting, man. Very, very, very interesting. But Carter Ben's going to fight December 11th. Now, the fight will take place on the zone here in the U.S. And uh, Katie Taylor will be on the card, too. I would assume we'd be on the zone in the UK too. So, you know, they've uh, severed their relationship with Sky Sports. So, it'll be on the zone in the UK and in the United States. So, it's a good matchup. Now, they, they mentioned Victor Ortiz as a possible opponent. They mentioned Robert Guerrero as a possible opponent. But those guys have been in great fights. Those guys have been in pay-per-view fights. So, for you to get them to come up over to the UK, come across the pond and fight Conor Ben, you would have to pay one of those guys probably at least $5 million. And I don't think Eddie Heron was going to be able to afford that. So, Chris Algeria is a guy that's going to fit the pay scale they want to pay an opponent of uh, Conor Ben at this time and date. And we'll see how the fight plays out. Now, if he gets the win, Eddie Heron said he will be looking to set the stage for a fight between Conor Ben and David Avenesia. David Avenesia is on a quite a run right now. Man, he's, he's been fighting unbelievably here late. Stopped his last opponent, Josh Kelly, who was the latest... UK hype job that got exposed. Fought in the same line of Frank Bruno and you know, Anthony Joshua, guys that were overrated and got exposed when they uh, got in the ring and fought a certain style of fighter. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But yeah, Conor Ben versus Chris Algieri is the fight, man. It's going to be very interesting. Now, Chris Algieri is on a four fight winning streak. His last four fights probably been over there across the pond, if I'm not mistaken. So he fought a guy named Mikhail LaFleur, defeated him, and he's won his last four fights, man. So ever since the Earl Smith Jr. fight, he's not been that active, but when he's been in the ring, he's got the dub. So you got to get credit for, for him in that aspect, in that regard. So we will see how it plays out 
in December 11th of 2021. Eddie Hearn, who I always like to throw a lot of names out there, a lot of names, a lot of the names in the welterweight division. He threw out Adrian Broner. That fight's not happening. He threw out Robert the Ghost Guerrero. That fight's not happening. And he threw out Victor Vicious Ortiz, and that fight's not happening. Can't afford any of those fights. Those fights are going to want and we, in regards to Guerrero and Ortiz, they probably going to want at least $5 million. And Adrian Broner has been telling you that he wants $10 million. So those guys are out of the price range for Eddie Hearn to secure those as opponents for Conor Ben. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. But that's the latest and the greatest. As Conor Ben will take another test, another huge step up. And you look at Conor Ben, man, quiet as kept. When you look at the young guns, Conor Ben, Jerome Boost Ennis and Virgil Ortiz. I hate to say it, but I think Jerome Boost Ennis is probably the best out of them three, but he probably has the worst resume out of those three young Lions in the welterweight division. When you look at Victor Ortiz Jr., he's fought Maurice Hooker, and he's fought Igus Kavalaskis. So those are quality of welterweights. And when you look at Conor Ben, he's fought Sebastian Formello, who held the teller at uh, welterweight, the IBO title. It was a minor league belt, but he held a belt. He was undefeated going into the, uh, well, he had one loss going into the Sean Porter fight, so he's fought Sebastian Formello, he's fought Samuel Vargas, and now he's getting there with, well, before that, he's fought Adrian Granados, and now he's getting there with uh, Chris Algeria, so he's, he's probably got, him and Victor Ortiz are basically in a tug of war for the best resume out of those three young Waterway prospects. Now, Jerome Boussin has been in there with Sergey Lipinets, and he's about to get in there with Thomas Delorme. So he, he he's, he's not out of it. Though. He's not like he's got a way worse resume, but you know he's he's right there, man. But I th I think if you had to rate it, man, I think Victor Ortiz got the best resume because uh, I believe that Evas Kowalowskis is probably the best opponent out of all the three guys that they've fought so far. And then Maurice Hooker held a better one for it, and he's a, a solid contender at 147 pounds. So. I think he's got slightly better resume than Conor Ben, who's been in there with Sebastian Formello, Samuel Vargas, and Adrian Granados, who's, when you look at his record, he's got a lot of losses, but he's got a lot of disputed losses. He's been in there with Porter, Broner, uh, Robert Easter Jr. He's been in there with some top names. He's been in there with, uh, what's old boy, uh, what's old boy that they was ducking? They said Devin Haney was ducking in lightweight. I can't remember his name right now, but the guy from uh, Dominican Republic. They fought him, man. He got carried out the ring on a stretcher, man. His name escapes me right now. Javier Fortuna. Javier Fortuna. So, Granados, you know, been in there with some top names. So, that's a credible opponent for Conor Ben to have conquered. So, both guys got work to do as far as establishing themselves as welterweight contenders. But uh, you can make a case that uh, Jerome Boussin is out of those three, who I think is the most talented out of those three. He has a rest, the worst resume out of those three thus far. Let me know your thoughts about each fighter resume. Do you agree with me that uh, Boots has the worst resume? Uh, and do you agree with me that Virgil Ortiz Jr. has the best resume slightly over Conor Ben, who quite as kept has a solid resume for a guy who has established himself in the welterweight division. Let me know your thoughts and subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend in our holler.